Okay, you guys, I am so ready to talk about Episode Ignis because it was awesome. But if you haven't played Episode Ignis yet, this review will be filled with spoilers, so go play it and then come back. Okay, so after completing Final Fantasy's main story and feeling legitimately bummed out after the ending's ambiguity clouded my soul for, like, days, Playing episode Ignis was a complete emotional about face for me. You guys, let's talk about the good elements of episode Ignis. And there were a lot of them. Story clarity. So instead of just being some sort of side adventure where we get to hang out with Ignis and maybe accomplish some cooking side quest or something, rather, we were thrown into another perspective of the main story, which is exactly what we needed. Those of us who were a little disappointed with holes in the main story were gifted by episode Ignis with some of the explanations and the payoffs we had originally been seeking. For the first time, we learned for sure that Ignis was actually aware of the life sacrifice that Noct would have to make in order to save the world. What did I just see? A vision of what's to come? And more general emphasis was given to the fact that Noct would really actually have to die, which helped us grasp that concept a bit more. Had we been this prepared for Noct's death during the main game, less fans probably would have been as upset when the main character that they'd spent so much time with was suddenly killed via random sword stab by an apparition of his father. Also, most of us suspected that Episode Ignis would reveal how Iggy lost his sight. And again, the game makers delivered. I had originally assumed that Ignis was probably injured in a battle with Ravis or with Arden, or maybe he was pummeled in the face by some falling bridge or magic spell gone awry. But I never considered the possibility that his injury came from a deliberate act of self-sacrifice involving the Ring of Lucis. That was brilliant. It was a creative move, it gave more purpose and clarity to the ring, it furthered the story, it helped us learn more about Ravis, and most importantly, it showed us more of the thing we love about Ignis. His unwavering loyalty and humble willingness to sacrifice even his own self for Noct. As if we already didn't love the crap out of Iggy enough. So because episode Ignis' story was written so well, it not only made me love the episode story, but it made me like the main story even more than I did before playing the episode, as you can see by watching my main game review. So for DLC content, that is pretty good game making. And Arden. I never jumped completely on board with who he was during the main game because there was just too much ambiguity surrounding him and his backstory. But I wanted to jump on board, because Arden as a character is actually extremely interesting. He's well voiced, and he's well designed. So while Episode Ignis didn't answer all of my questions about the guy, any additional time that we spend with Arden is time well spent, because it helps us grasp more about who he is. So I like that Arden was a part of Episode Ignis. And it sounds like Arden is getting his own episode of the DLC in the future, so I'm really looking forward to playing that. The music. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot say enough about this. We all know that Final Fantasy music is actually pretty amazing, right? My favorite concert of the year was the Distant Worlds Final Fantasy concert in LA. I'm a nerd. It was awesome. But the music in Episode Ignis is beyond good. It is brilliant. If you haven't paid much attention to it, you need to, starting this very moment. Not only is the score beautifully and creatively written, but it completely fits the character of Ignis and the world he navigates. Throughout the music, Ignis is clearly represented by a violin, surrounded by high tempo driving instruments and an epic chorus. Concerned and determined violin, you guys, is a perfect instrument for a kind-hearted royal butler who kicks everyone's trash. The score has hope, it has perseverance, it has energy, it has heart. And at the end of the episode when Ignis puts that ring on his finger and he starts pummeling Arden, the violin melody temporarily transforms into an unleashed electric guitar. A fierce transformation from proper to hardcore.
That is good composing. And for music that is meant to be played in a loop, it is extremely non-repetitive. Honestly, my only complaint about the music in Episode Ignis is the fact that I can't find any place online to purchase the high-quality original soundtrack, so Square Enix, please hook me up, because Episode Ignis' music was seriously an 11 out of 10. And I kid you not, but it makes for some really good workout music. So I've created a Nerdtacular Final Fantasy XV workout playlist using upbeat tracks. So I'll link that to the end of this video if any of you want to geek out at the gym with me. The character. We just need to say it. Ignis is the bomb.com. And this episode stayed true to his character throughout the entire thing. The guy is loyal, he's grateful, he's kind, smart, selfless, thoughtful, and at the same time, he friggin' kicks butt all over the episode. And that's when he's not cooking gourmet food on some crappy camp stove. And he's not perfect, which makes him even cooler. We got a taste of his imperfections when we watched him suggest to Noct that maybe he not continue his journey, because Ignis knew that Noct was going to die if he pressed forward. Perhaps it might be best if we brought our journey to a close. Why? It's just that um, we've already lost so much. Too much. Are you kidding me? That's exactly why I have to keep going. Because if I give up now, their sacrifices would have been for nothing. And you... You of all people... You should know that better than anyone. That was a moment of weakness for Ignis, because he was putting the love he had for his friend over the duty he knew he needed to carry out in order to ensure the world was saved. And that weakness just makes us care more about him. It gives him humanity that connects him to us. I love the thought that seeing Noct die was too painful for even the strong, silent loyalist. So much so that for a moment, his heart pushed his duty aside. Plus, we got to dive a little deeper into who Ignis was as a person, and we saw just how seriously he takes his calling to be the companion, servant, and friend to Noct. Throughout the episode, he has one goal, protect Noctis at all costs. Hang on, Noct. I'm on my way. There were even little Easter egg moments that spoke to his character. Like when I realized that that part of the speech Ignis had given after he defeated the Marlboro during the main game was apparently taken word for word from King Regis himself, spoken at the beginning of episode Ignis. A king, king pushes, pushes onward, onward always, accepting, accepting the consequences, consequences and never looking, and never looking back. back. It's totally within his character that Ignis would purposefully remember the words of Noct's father in order to speak them in guidance to Noct so many years later. Or small gestures that define so much about the story, like that moment during the credits when Ignis is walking to Noct's bedside and he accidentally bumps the bench with his foot. It was a perfect way to signify his new loss of sight, and I thought it was a powerful piece of visual subtlety that was straight out of a Pixar movie. Brotherhood payoffs. So I loved the brotherhood of Noctis, Ignis, Gladio, and Prompto so much in the main game, so that the biggest disappointment for me in the main game's ending was feeling like the relationship between those four guys was neglected. So in episode Ignis, I was especially happy to see more of the bond play out between Noct and Ignis. I love that the episode starts out with us as Ignis meeting Noct for the first time as a little child and introducing the importance of the responsibility given to Iggy to take care of the young prince. Please, take care of my son. And then, later, seeing Noct thank Ignis near that final campground scene after years of walking side by side was exactly what I wanted. 
I would have been cool with a hug, but I get it. Bros don't always hug it out, and it probably would have been a little awkward to animate some stoic video game characters in an embrace. So I was very happy with the way it ended with that same grasp hand that we saw in the beginning of the game. And there were other sweet brotherhood moments, like watching the way that Prompto and Gladio took care of Iggy and showed such concern for him after he loses his sight. Any moment that took place between the four guys and I was totally dialed in. Thanks. Thanks for everything, Iggy. Animations. If you were like me during episode Ignis, you may have been thinking, wait a minute, Ignis is looking a lot better now than he did in the main game. While the animations were really good in the main game, the game creators really took it up a notch in episode Ignis. When he spoke, his mouth and his facial expressions were more animated and in sync with his words, making you feel more like you were watching a movie than seeing a digital model be coded to hit certain keyframes. He swam, he drove a boat, his combat moves were awesome, he literally lets his hair down, and despite not being able to warp, he was able to find a grappling hook that allowed him to perch on rooftops and light posts like Spider-Man. And there were those moments where I was blown away by his animation, like in the ridiculously well choreographed scene where Ignis unleashes a butler storm on Ravis. That was rad. I also appreciated the steady background animation that showed Titan called into battle with Leviathan. It kept reminding me that I was still a part of that main story. And as a filmmaker, I loved the angles that you could pick when Ignis was pinned to the ground and protesting Arden. I thought that was a really interesting way to keep the gamer engaged in the scene. There were so many good things about this episode that I just don't have time to cover them all. I was so ecstatic after playing it. I loved it, if you can't tell. In fact, I was so happy with the way that it all turned out that I basically had trouble finding things that I didn't like about it. There wasn't anything that I can really say was bad about episode Ignis. But if I'm reaching, I guess I could find a couple things that were more meh for me. So meh number one, Ravis's relatability. Ravis is still a little one note for me. Don't get me wrong, I actually really liked that Ravis and Ignis teamed up together, and I really liked learning more about who Ravis was and what his backstory was, and how he had originally lost his arm by putting on the ring and incorrectly thinking that he was the chosen one meant to chase away the darkness. I liked that so much that you could actually consider that part of my good list. The meh part was that I didn't really connect with Ravis's backstory and motivations as much as I would have liked to. He just felt a little bit too much like a cliche sub-villain who just happened to love his sister for some reason. My sister's life is at stake. Is that not reason enough? I'd like to know more about the soft side of him or about the inner struggles that he has when it comes to doing the right thing versus serving the Empire. The game showed us that his harshness and hatred for Noct comes from his impression that his mother's death was King Regis' fault. His father spared us nary a second thought. But it also kind of seemed like his anger was based on a pretty significant misunderstanding? First, the Lucian stole from me my mother. That you think would have been settled years ago, especially since his sister he supposedly loved and listened to didn't seem to have any of the same issues. Get out of my way! But even with the backstory as it is, I would have probably connected to it more if I knew why revenge for the death of his mother was such a strong driving factor for him. Was he especially close to his mother? Was there anything King Regis could have done differently to make sure both Noct and Ravis's mother survived? Again, this is me just reaching for things that I didn't like in episode Ignis because there really wasn't much to criticize. I think it was a good move to put Ravis in episode Ignis and in the DLC and answer more questions about who he was. I just think it could have been written a little bit better. That was rather reckless. <laughs> the alternate ending. The other meh element of this DLC episode is the second verse that you earn after completing episode Ignis for the first time. Though none of this is really a criticism of the game because verse two is exactly that. It's a second verse, an optional storyline and ending, not actual canon. But let's talk about it anyway. Have I piqued your curiosity? First of all, I'll be the first to admit that I wanted a more hopeful ending to the main story of Final Fantasy XV. 
If you haven't picked up on it by now, I was not a fan of the way that the main game story concluded. And while it sounds like some people were okay with it, there were apparently a lot of other fans who were in the same boat that I was in. So, to the credit of Square Enix, they apparently tried to listen to their fans, as is evidenced by verse 2 of Episode Ignis, which is basically an alternate ending to the entire game. Instead of Nox sacrificing his life and dying only to leave the Brotherhood behind without conclusion, verse 2 allows Ignis to volunteer his own life so that Noct can live. Ignis is whisked away from Altitia to Chapter 13 land, where he is confronted by Arden in a pretty major way, and then he dukes it out with the immortal McDemons a lot. When you think Ignis is done for, Noct and friends show up, and the king basically asks the crystal to save Ignis's life. In the end, not only does Ignis live, but so does Noct, the rest of the Brotherhood, and even Ravis, who is apparently redeemed and happy to show you his new facial hair. And on top of all that sunshine, Ignis gets to keep his eyesight. There were things that I actually liked about Verse 2. I like that the game makers listen to their fans regardless of the result, so good for them. I also like the additional story background on Arden, or at least a little more clarification as to who he was. And the fact that Ignis could choose to sacrifice his own life is really true to Ignis's character. He would totally do that for Noct. I also like seeing more emotion play out between the Brotherhood. I eat that stuff up like nobody's business. Though there were a few moments that were a little too cheesy weird, even for me. Help me! Protect my friends! What I wasn't in love with was actually the fact that everything ended happily. And how it did was confusing. I wanted a little bit more hope in the main game's ending, not a complete sugar fest. In this version of the story, we see that just about everyone good survives, except Jared. But everything seems a little surface because there obviously wasn't a lot of time and resources that could be dedicated to an alternate ending in a DLC episode. Understandably so. I didn't even need Ignis to keep his sight. Blinding him in the main game was a bold move that pulled me further into the story, and I liked that Ignis ended up being a kick-butt fighter even without his eyesight, because it demonstrated that his fighting finesse came from his soul and his instincts, in addition to his other senses. So when the alternate ending kept his sight, I was like, meh. I will pay that price! But really, it's probably not even that fair to criticize verse 2 of episode Ignis much, because it's an optional second verse that was created with good intentions, and it probably made some fans happy. So in conclusion, you guys, episode Ignis is awesome. It rocked on so many levels. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And I'll probably play it a whole bunch more times. And honestly, Team Ignis should be really proud about what they put out there. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to drop me a line in the comments box, hit like if you didn't hate what you see, and subscribe and hit that bell if you'd like to be privy to some future Final Fantasy videos. I pride myself on creating high quality content for you, and while I create videos on a number of different topics, I do have some pretty cool Final Fantasy 15 video projects in the works that you don't want to miss. Indeed. Where we get to hang out with Ink, with Ig None of this is really a criticism. Criticism. Instead of not only to leave the brother hind so hot, oh my gosh, from Altitia to chapter thir- F. Why can't I speak words? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. But I'm excited for air conditioning. Almost done. It's an optional second verse that. <laughs> I got no words. Thanks for tuning in. I feel like a moron doing this part. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to drop me something so stupid talking about myself. Feel free to drop me a line in the comments box. I hate self-promoting. And hit that bell if you want to be privy, privy to some English lessons. A variety of videos on a variety of... Ri <laughs> this is the worst. Okay. I do have some pretty cool Final 15... <laughs> Final 15 <laughs> fantasies. But while well, well, <sighs> produce a variety of a, a B C D E F G, shut up.